subscribe to my YouTube channel. No, 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 I'm joking. Mejora, no, mejora no. tu padre, mejora no, tu padre. To him. <laughs>
for sure. Anyway, you you like to be the number one, uh, number one or number two, and then the next step, next step is between three and four, and then five to eight is more or less is just the same, mm. and after the eight, the eight your your death because <laughs> because it's really difficult. Yeah, yeah. That was your first thought, and uh, what do you more think of of the World Paddle Tour this well, coming year? Yeah, about the males because it's, this is about the fem about the females. I think. It's going to be really nice watching to the females if they can go into the twins or Gemma and Lucia. And the second one is about the males. There are a lot of changes, a lot of new couples. Mm. For example, the the one I I'm thinking more about it is uh, about Paquito Navarro and, uh, and Juanito Lebron because furthermore we are training together uh, one court with court because we train in Sunset Paddle, mm. and it's a really uh, impressive couple, really offensive. Absolutely offensive. Obviously, yeah. they can defend, but mm. I'm trying. I'm looking forward to see what's going on. It can be uh, both, and I think. Yeah, it could be magic. It could not be, <laughs> but well, they are super players. But the truth is that they are both like the same kind of player. So now you you have twice yeah. <laughs> and at the same yeah. place. And Juanito has to play at the forehand, and it's not the best, the best place for him. Well, we will see. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to see a lot of smash. <laughs> it will be bang, bang, boom, yeah. boom. That's great. I, I am thinking when I see the schedule or the planning that it's much more international yep. this year. Yeah, it's, what World Battle Tour yeah. is trying to develop on, on this point of view because now we're playing one World Battle Tour world, mm. and we are nearly all the all, they are playing only in Spain and some couple of tournaments in, in South America and then trying to go to the to for you throw Europe and they're trying to do more international yeah. the, the problems about the, the prices and how much cost for the player to be traveling because obviously the, the uh, until the uh, number eight they're winning they're earning a good amount of money maybe it's not like in tennis obviously but they can travel with the team with the coach mm. uh, but the problem is for the number 40 and that's the player or even the girls that the players that struggle a lot yeah. if he can travel and play and maybe he can lose the first round so it's hard yeah, it's a lot of costs and uh, it's a lot of time because everyone is working more or less yeah they have to and and now you go instead of just going to the village next to your house you go to the Netherlands or to Sweden yep yeah so uh, this this weekend I've tried to make you a little bit more Swedish yeah yeah what about the breakfast this morning wow it's so heavy what's the name Gröt Havigrinsgröt you, you can try yeah Havigrinsgröt Havigrinsgröt perfect <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, heavy, huh? Yeah, really heavy. That's good. I, I, when I, I could not finish it. No. But I was so, thir so thirsty, two glasses of water for a Spaniard. <laughs> I think it's fair because I'm the double size of you and you you eat like 50%. Yeah, of but no, now we have, uh, we have ate uh, hamburger and I have <laughs> eaten the same <laughs> like you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, all right, uh, it's something completely else. Um, in Sweden, there is like a, a mystery about the bandeja. Yeah. For, for in Spain, time. <laughs> in Spain, in Spain the same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the three, your best, the three best advices for okay. a complete beginner. Okay. That I think is also useful for the advanced yeah. players. Yeah. Well, the, the first one is about the uh, bandeja is the name, uh, but there are different kind of bandeja, it's like the forehand or the backhand. Okay, you have the forehand, the, the forehand, but you have the flat, the top, the fast, the slow. So the first thing is to know that the bandeja is the concept of trying to win uh, the net again, to, to keep. Uh, I want to stay at the net because I'm able to, to win more points. Mm -hmm. I can be more offensive when I am close to the net. Then I want to keep the net for me and my partner. Then that's the, the the first goal with the bandeja is trying to keep the net and to push the opponent to be defending all the time 
because uh, otherwise he's going to attack me, counter attack me, and it's and we don't really like that situation. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first one. That's the first. Yeah, the second one is, is thinking about the about the rhythm, about the time that look at. I'm not talking about the technique. I'm firstly talk, talking about the tactic. So try to think about the speed. I need to go to go back uh, once and once and once because one more time I have to do it. The bandeja, uh, trying to wait for my moment to push and to boost, mm -hmm. and then when I I feel comfortable, then I can shoot uh, harder. But it's only when when I feel comfortable. And the third one, uh, it's for the beginner players, is trying to make it as easy as possible. Think that you're hit, uh, shooting uh, one volley. It's like the volley. It's, uh, I, for me, the bandeja is different than the than the and the vibora viper mm -hmm. and the bandeja should be made like a high volley okay high volley forehand high volley and then as easy as possible you can begin with the flat the flat spin and then you can use some back spin and if you're you feel comfortable from the middle of the court put into the back wall slow or if you have uh, enough angle then you can put to the side wall but always making it uh, take it easy as possible, yeah. okay? Because you have to put the bandeja all the time, all the time inside. Anyway, uh, here in in Sweden, uh, the, the 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 game is really fast, <laughs> really fast. It's really fast. Yeah. And I think it, it's it's a really good advice because my experience when I I give in uh, lessons is that we overcomplicate the the bandeja. The question is like, is this a bandeja or not? No, it has to be sliced, it has to be this. It's more like a, yeah, as you say, it's a concept it's a, with, with different variations. Yeah. So it, it can it can look in quite many different ways, also very individual for the different players. Yeah, it depends so. on the player. So it's, it's an overhead. You can do different spins, it's, it's still a bandeja. Yeah, so yeah. Great stuff. <laughs> um, we we went to this no we didn't went we organized a coaching seminar for for coaches yesterday and one hot topic was the rules about the surf because we can clearly see the professional star players if you have the center line they have the impact of the ball over the center line so it's it's not in the um, uh, in the in the cross you yeah. can say. So what is actually the rules? Actually, actually the rules. Okay, we now, have now is the the moment of truth. Moment of truth. Okay, <laughs> and <laughs> and you will be responsible. Okay, and now yeah. okay, then what about the the rules on the service? We have three points. Okay, your feet has to be in your own side. Okay, that what the rule says. Uh, the second one is that you have to bounce the ball inside your own side of the field. And the third one is that you have to serve cross court. But uh, you can bounce on your own side. The ball can go to the right side of the court. You can impact over the right side of the court, always with your feet in your own field. And then you can uh, serve cross court, but, are, but there are two kinds of cross court, this one or this one. So it's allowed because the rule is wrong, but uh, you can do it. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> and you can have, uh, you, you, you only have to have one foot. Yeah, in, the, the, on rule, the, ground. the rule says, uh, it says that you have to be at least well, at least one that you have to, to yeah. you must have in contact uh, you must be in contact with the with the round because you you're not allowed to jump but theoretically uh, stepping is not jumping so you can put one step out up mm -hmm. then what people do is uh, first of all walking because you can do you can use two kind of serves the dynamical or the statical statical Surf, yeah. and when you're in the dynamical, then you can step step forward, and at the same time you can go on one only on one only f uh, foot, and then you're putting your waist uh, higher. Then you're improving your surf. Yeah, as you see here in 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 the clips. As you can see. As you can. See. <laughs> yeah. What else? 
What else about the serve? We discussed a lot. Uh, yeah, we, so we you were can, you're talking. only allowed to take one step. Yeah, one step, only one. Because then you're... The, the, Juan Imieres style. Yeah, like Juan Imieres or like Agustin Silingo. Because then the referee, uh, he will say that you're running and you're not allowed to run. Mm. You, you can. Uh, they asked me for two more questions. One is, uh, are you able, can you bounce the, the ball or you have to let it uh, fall, drop the mm. ball? Mm. And you're allowed to, to bounce. Uh, long time ago, it wasn't allowed, but now it's now it is so you can bounce and I recommend you to bounce it depends on the trainer I recommend you to bounce and the second one was about the edge of the of the glass on the side wall when el you're pico. serving El pico pico in Spain we had in Spain and in Argentina and Brazil there was the one of the older oldest uh, courts were had the pico the it's like um, the side wall is it's not just exactly with the with the fence so there is a pico, there's an, an edge. Mm. Then if the ball goes directly to this and bounce on this uh, edge, um, sometimes do different things. So I can understand when you play on concrete, muros. Muros. There was walls. this big edge. Yeah, there was so a... The ball could basically go straight back to... Yes. I think that was the questions. So the last one then. And the last one, where was? Yeah, because I haven't told you. I will tell you now. Okay. So why do you, do they continue to serve with the impact of the ball like up here? Yeah. And and uh, that seems to be okay. They get a warning from the ref, and then they just continue. The players. If if so they are continuously uh, too high. And they don't get the warning. Yeah. They get That's... the warning, but they they uh, they continue to do it. Well, it's by as long as the ref. It's okay then. Yeah, well, sometimes it's because well, I'm, I it's better not to say any name, but there, there are players. Yeah, I'm sharing time with them, so I don't, I won't say any name. <laughs> but yeah, there, are, there are players that used to, to serve too high above the the waist. For the referee, it's difficult because he's up in the chair and it's yeah. difficult. You and the, even this is re, a really common topic between the players that we need one more two more referee referees or one referee to be watching all the time to to that rule i think that the rule is not really so good because for example like really small really but i think it's good <laughs> no but <laughs> he's really tall then when you're serving you have your you have some advantage yeah. then some people doesn't like it for example with concepcion <laughs> he is his waist is like my He's my eye. Me yeah. taller than me. Yeah, then he has some <laughs> advantage. Okay, that's okay. In tennis, it happens the same. But well, anyway, you you need someone to be all the time looking at uh, the the height the height of the of the service. But uh, they wait until the first uh, warning, and after it, then try to to put the ball with some more uh, with low risk of uh, of making warning again. But well, it, it's uh, on their own. On, on their own, it's the way of of serve. But sometimes they, the the referee has the pressure. You can imagine it's the master, it's the quarterfinals, it's the the final. Mm. And are you going as a referee uh, to stop and put the second warning because of the serve? Five six in tie break in the third set. Yeah, it's it's a tough situation. You can do it, but yeah. maybe you are breaking the you're breaking the. The, the match in the people is going to get really angry <laughs> so it's difficult well manu it's had been it has been a pleasure to have you here it's uh, my pleasure thank I you i really much. hope to see you soon probably in madrid yep uh, i will come and visit you you don't know when i will just show up don't worry like, the, like the a ghost people the people in the blog <laughs> will know <laughs> they will know they will know Thank you so much, uh, guys, for, for watching this episode. Um, and uh, next time, I hope to be able to base um, <clears throat> the episode on questions from you. So bring them on, on Instagram or here on YouTube and uh, or to my email. It's easy to get the email through Instagram as well. So take care and have good matches out there. Until next time. Just because.
because I can. Because that YouTuber Habikun. rules here. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay.